And she has the photograph to prove it. Chris Emma spoke with a woman today, and Chris will let the viewers be the judge of that picture. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually a bit of a skeptic myself, but when Deborah Colalella showed me those pictures that she snapped on her cell phone. To grab a piece of paper, I have to look at my window, and I saw the beautiful sunset, but I saw this form in the sky that was amazing. Deborah ran to grab her phone. Welcome to today's video, where we'll delve into a remarkable event that has captured the imagination of many. A Michigan woman recently captured a breathtaking photo that she later posted online, showcasing what many believe to be a glimpse of divine handiwork. This stunning image of clouds forming the shape of a cross, illuminated by the sunrise, has sparked widespread discussions and awe on social media. Throughout history, there have been moments where reality seems to blur with the miraculous, heralding profound changes. Today, we witness similar events as celestial beings are reportedly seen amidst catastrophic floods, ravaging gulf cities and communities. These sightings evoke echoes of ancient scriptures and prophecies, serving as chilling reminders of our fragile existence and the relentless march of divine judgment. As floodwaters bring devastation, the appearance of angels in the skies above offers a complex mix of hope and doom. In this crucible of chaos and revelation, faith, fear, and the human spirit are tested like never before. Humanity now grapples with the unfolding events, questioning the significance of these celestial sightings and the symbolism of the floods. Are these celestial beings messengers of hope or harbingers of doom? Hey everybody, good morning. Quarter till the top of the hour. Happy Sunday. Well, a Michigan woman capturing a glimpse of God's handiwork in an amazing photo she later posted online. We'll take a closer look at it. You can see the clouds coming together to form a cross as the sun rises from behind. The picture has now been shared millions of times online and the woman who took that photo, Michelle Larraff, joins me now. When I took the picture, no. Um, initially, what caught my eye was... Reports of angel sightings in the skies above America have surfaced, reinforcing belief in higher powers and the beauty of natural occurrences that can evoke spiritual reflection. These ethereal apparitions instill a profound sense of fear and awe in witnesses, tapping into deep-seated cultural, religious, and psychological facets of human experience. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, angels are often viewed as divine messengers or guardians sent to deliver God's will or protect individuals from harm. This religious context shapes how many interpret unusual celestial phenomena. For devout Christians, an angel sighting could signify divine intervention or a portent of significant spiritual events reinforced by scriptural references to angelic appearances from Gabriel's Annunciation to Mary in the New Testament to the myriad of angelic visitations in the Old Testament. When witnesses report seeing angels in the sky, they draw on these deep-rooted religious narratives to make sense of their experiences. However, environmental and astronomical phenomena offer another layer of explanation. The sky serves as a canvas for various natural events that can create spectacular visual effects, Lenticular clouds, for instance, often form smooth, lens-like shapes resembling angelic forms. Auroras, or the northern lights, produce dynamic and colorful displays that appear otherworldly. Additionally, light reflections and refractions, such as halos or sundogs, can create luminous figures or patterns that might be interpreted as supernatural beings. Those unfamiliar with atmospheric science may misinterpret these natural occurrences, leading to reports of angel sightings. The role of social influence and media cannot be overlooked in the proliferation of angel sighting reports. In today's interconnected world, stories and images spread rapidly through social media platforms, news outlets, and word of mouth. As these reports circulate, they often become more elaborate and dramatic, feeding into collective belief or mass hysteria. 
When people hear about angel sightings from multiple sources, they may be more inclined to believe they have witnessed something similar, even if their original perception was ambiguous. This social reinforcement creates a feedback loop where the increasing number of reports lends credence to the phenomenon, encouraging more people to come forward with their experiences. Historical precedents for such collective experiences abound. The 1917 apparitions in Fatima, Portugal, where three children reported seeing the Virgin Mary and an angel, attracted thousands of pilgrims and widespread media attention. Similarly, in the 1960s, a series of reported Marian apparitions in Garabandal, Spain, drew international notice. In both cases, initial reports were bolstered by religious and cultural expectations, and the resulting mass gatherings and media coverage helped solidify the events in public consciousness. Modern angel sightings in America can be seen as part of this continuum, where extraordinary claims are shaped by cultural narratives, psychological predispositions, and the power of social media. Events interpreted as apocalyptic signs from religious texts can evoke fear and uncertainty, particularly among those with strong religious beliefs or sensitivity to such interpretations. Throughout history, natural phenomena or unusual events have often been interpreted as signs of impending apocalypse or divine intervention. The idea of apocalyptic events manifesting in the skies is deeply rooted in religious beliefs and cultural interpretations. The Book of Revelation in the Christian Bible describes dramatic events heralding the end of the world, including cosmic disturbances like stars falling from the sky and the sun being darkened. These vivid descriptions lead some individuals and groups to scrutinize celestial events for signs aligning with biblical prophecies evoking fear and a sense of urgency, especially for those interpreting scripture literally. Recent technological advancements and widespread information availability have amplified the spread of interpretations linking natural occurrences with biblical prophecy. Images and videos of unusual cloud formations, celestial alignments, or atmospheric phenomena quickly circulate on social media, fueling speculation and apprehension, in addition to the strange events discovered in the skies of America, another shocking event has increased the severity of perceived doomsday signs. Southern California has been pummeled by devastating storms resulting in biblical floods, causing catastrophic destruction and unprecedented horror. The scale and intensity of these events have left residents comparing the devastation to the calamitous floods described in the book of Genesis and the apocalyptic visions in the book of Revelation. Torrential rains have inundated vast areas, transforming serene neighborhoods into sprawling lakes of murky, debris-filled water. The floods have overwhelmed drainage systems, submerged highways, and swallowed homes, forcing tens of thousands to evacuate and leaving many stranded on rooftops awaiting rescue. The chaos unleashed by these storms can only be described as apocalyptic. The relentless rain driven by atmospheric rivers pounded the region for days, unleashing a deluge that Southern California's infrastructure was woefully unprepared to handle. Levees designed to contain floodwaters were breached, and dams that had held firm for decades crumbled under unprecedented pressure. Emergency services were stretched to their limits, scrambling to respond to countless calls for help, navigating through flooded streets, fallen trees, and landslides. The destruction is reminiscent of the Great Flood in the Book of Genesis, where it is written that the heavens opened and rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, covering the highest mountains and obliterating all life not sheltered in Noah's Ark. In Southern California, the torrential downpours seemed ceaseless, with record-breaking rainfall levels surpassing any in living memory. Entire communities have been washed away, their remains scattered across miles of once fertile land. The increasing reports of angel sightings and the apocalyptic scale of recent natural disasters reflect a complex interplay of religious beliefs, cultural narratives, psychological predispositions, and social media influence. While these interpretations evoke fear and awe, it is essential to approach such claims with skepticism and critical thinking. 
recognizing that natural phenomena and atmospheric science often offer more plausible explanations. The recent catastrophic flooding in Southern California has transformed the once thriving region into a desolate, waterlogged wasteland. This disaster has upended lives, separated families, destroyed homes, and caused a rising death toll. As the waters recede and the full extent of the devastation becomes apparent, the apocalyptic imagery evokes the Book of Revelation, which speaks of catastrophic events heralding the end times. The vision of the four horsemen, conquest, war, famine, and death, seems almost prophetic in the wake of these storms. Relentless weather patterns have disrupted supply chains, leading to shortages of food and essential goods. Panic buying has stripped supermarket shelves bare, leaving communities struggling to secure basic necessities. The economic impact is staggering, with businesses destroyed, livelihoods shattered, and the cost of rebuilding estimated in the billions of dollars. As the rain poured and the floodwaters rose, stories of survival and loss emerged, each more harrowing than the last. In one town, a nursing home was inundated, leaving elderly residents trapped in rising waters until rescuers reached them by boat. In another, a family clung to the roof of their house for two days, surrounded by water and cut off from all assistance. Emergency shelters have filled to capacity, with evacuees facing uncertain futures as they contemplate the loss of their homes and possessions. Environmental factors have exacerbated the disaster. Years of drought left the land parched and unable to absorb the sudden influx of water. The widespread wildfires of recent years had stripped hillsides of vegetation, leaving them vulnerable to catastrophic mudslides when the rains came, creating additional hazards for rescue operations. The devastation wrought by these converging natural forces has been compounded by climate change, which scientists warn is making extreme weather events more frequent and intense. The response to this calamity has been multifaceted and fraught with challenges. Local, state, and federal agencies have mobilized resources, but the sheer scale of the disaster has overwhelmed even the most robust contingency plans. National Guard units have been deployed to assist with evacuations and provide relief to isolated communities. Humanitarian organizations have launched massive relief efforts, providing food, water, and medical supplies to those affected. Volunteers have flocked to the region, offering their assistance in any way possible, from filling sandbags to distributing supplies and providing comfort to the displaced. Despite these efforts, the recovery process is expected to be long and arduous. The immediate focus is on rescuing those still in danger, providing for the needs of evacuees and restoring essential services. However, the long-term challenges are daunting. Rebuilding homes, infrastructure, and businesses will take years and require an unprecedented allocation of resources. The emotional and psychological toll on the survivors is incalculable, with many facing the daunting task of rebuilding their lives from scratch. In the aftermath of the floods, questions are being raised about the preparedness and resilience of Southern California's infrastructure. Critics argue that more should have been done to fortify levees, upgrade drainage systems, and develop comprehensive emergency plans. The disaster has underscored the urgent need for investment in climate resilience and adaptation strategies. As climate change continues to drive extreme weather events, communities must be better prepared to withstand and recover from such shocks. The biblical floods that have ravaged Southern California serve as a stark reminder of humanity's vulnerability to the forces of nature. The images of submerged cities, shattered homes, and despairing faces are seared into the collective memory, a testament to the destructive power of water. Yet amid the devastation, there is also a glimmer of hope. The resilience and solidarity displayed by the affected communities, the tireless efforts of first responders and volunteers, and the outpouring of support from across the nation are a powerful testament to the human spirit.
As Southern California begins its long journey towards recovery, the lessons learned from this disaster will shape the region's future. The need for robust infrastructure, comprehensive emergency planning, and proactive climate action has never been clearer. In the face of unprecedented horror, the determination to rebuild and emerge stronger is a beacon of hope. This catastrophe, while devastating, may ultimately forge a more resilient and united community, better prepared to face the challenges of a changing world. In the aftermath of the biblical floods that have devastated numerous U.S. cities, communities across the nation have come together in remarkable displays of resilience and hope, mirroring the story of Noah's Ark and the covenant God made to never again destroy the earth with a flood. This unprecedented natural disaster has brought immense destruction, submerging homes, businesses, and infrastructure under murky waters and displacing thousands of families. Yet amid the chaos and ruin, the strength and solidarity of these communities shine brightly. From the very onset of the flooding, acts of bravery and selflessness have been evident. Neighbors have rescued each other from rising waters, strangers have opened their homes to those in need, and local businesses have donated essential supplies to aid in relief efforts. The unity displayed in these trying times echoes the biblical narrative of Noah's Ark, where cooperation and faith were essential for survival and renewal. In many ways, the response to the floods has been a testament to the enduring human spirit and the power of collective action. Community centers, churches, and schools have been transformed into makeshift shelters, providing not only physical refuge, but also emotional support to those who have lost everything. Volunteers, including students, retirees, and professionals, have rallied to distribute food, clothing, and medical supplies. This widespread mobilization of resources and people underscores the profound sense of community and shared responsibility that disasters often bring to the forefront. Just as Noah and his family worked together to preserve life during the Great Flood, modern communities are joining forces to rebuild and restore their lives from the ground up. The rebuilding process, though daunting, has inspired a renewed sense of purpose and determination. In towns where floodwaters have receded, residents have begun the arduous task of cleaning up and assessing the damage. Volunteers from across the country have flocked to the hardest-hit areas, bringing with them tools, expertise, and an unwavering spirit of camaraderie. This collective effort has not only expedited the recovery process, but also fostered a deeper sense of connection among people from diverse backgrounds. The rebuilding of homes, schools, and businesses is being tackled with a spirit of collaboration, with neighbors helping neighbors and communities pooling their resources to ensure that no one is left behind. Amid the physical reconstruction, there is also a profound emotional and spiritual rebuilding taking place. Many community leaders and religious organizations have played a crucial role in providing comfort and hope to those affected. Prayer vigils, interfaith services, and community gatherings have offered solace and a sense of unity, reinforcing the belief that they can overcome this adversity together. The story of Noah's Ark and the covenant with God serves as a powerful symbol of hope and renewal. Just as the rainbow signified God's promise to Noah, Communities are finding their own symbols of hope in the acts of kindness and the collective resolve to rebuild. The outpouring of support from across the nation has been overwhelming. Donations have poured in from individuals, corporations, and international communities, providing much-needed financial assistance for recovery efforts. Government agencies and nonprofit organizations have also been instrumental in coordinating relief and rebuilding initiatives. This extensive network of support highlights the interconnectedness of our society and the shared humanity that binds us all. The collaborative efforts to rebuild not only address immediate needs, but also lay the foundation for stronger, more resilient communities in the future. 
the catastrophic flooding in Southern California has highlighted both the vulnerability and resilience of humanity. The disaster has caused immense destruction, but it has also sparked a powerful response characterized by unity, bravery, and an unwavering spirit of recovery. The lessons learned from this disaster will shape the region's future, emphasizing the need for robust infrastructure, comprehensive emergency planning, and proactive climate action. Amid the devastation, the determination to rebuild, and the solidarity displayed by communities across the nation serve as a beacon of hope, demonstrating that even in the face of unprecedented challenges, the human spirit remains resilient and capable of overcoming adversity. The floods in California draw striking parallels to the ancient story of Noah's Ark, where a divine deluge cleansed the world of its sinfulness. This modern catastrophe, marked by relentless storms and unprecedented rainfall, has wreaked havoc across the state, submerging cities, sweeping away homes, and displacing thousands of residents. The sheer scale of destruction has left many pondering the deeper meanings and lessons that can be drawn from such a devastating natural event, much like the reflections prompted by the biblical flood. In the story of Noah, God observes the pervasive wickedness of humanity and decides to purify the earth through a great flood, sparing only Noah, his family, and a pair of each animal species to preserve life and start anew. This narrative of destruction and rebirth provides a poignant framework for understanding the current situation in California, where the floods have forced a reckoning with the environmental, social, and spiritual dimensions of contemporary life. The comparison to Noah's Ark begins with the cause and nature of the floods. In Genesis, the flood waters are seen as divine intervention, a direct response to human corruption and moral decay. Similarly, many view the California floods through the lens of environmental degradation and climate change, phenomena largely driven by human activity. Decades of industrial pollution, deforestation, and the relentless burning of fossil fuels have contributed to global warming, increasing the frequency and severity of extreme weather events. The relentless rains that have battered California can thus be seen as nature's retribution for humanity's disregard for the environment, echoing the moral and ecological cleansing that the biblical flood sought to achieve. As the floodwaters rise, the immediate human response has been one of survival and solidarity, mirroring the efforts of Noah and his family as they built the ark. Communities across California have mobilized to protect lives and property, showcasing remarkable resilience and cooperation. Emergency services, local governments, and volunteers have worked tirelessly to evacuate residents, provide shelter, and distribute essential supplies. These efforts highlight the capacity for human compassion and collective action in the face of disaster. Much like Noah's role in preserving life amidst the divine deluge, people have opened their homes to strangers, businesses have donated goods and services, and countless individuals have volunteered their time and resources to aid in recovery efforts. This outpouring of support and solidarity underscores the inherent goodness and unity that can emerge even during the most trying times, providing a glimmer of hope amidst the devastation. However, the aftermath of the floods reveals the profound and far-reaching impacts on California's infrastructure and ecosystems, akin to the world left desolate after the waters receded in Noah's time. The floods have caused widespread damage to homes, roads, bridges, and public utilities, leaving many communities grappling with the daunting task of rebuilding. Entire neighborhoods have been transformed into wastelands of mud and debris, and the economic toll is staggering, with billions of dollars needed for reconstruction. The agricultural sector, a cornerstone of California's economy, has also suffered tremendously, with crops destroyed and farmland rendered unusable. 
This widespread destruction forces a reflection on the fragility of human constructs and the need for more sustainable and resilient approaches to living in harmony with nature. Moreover, the floods have had a significant impact on California's natural environment, disrupting ecosystems and wildlife habitats. Rivers swollen beyond their banks have altered landscapes, uprooted trees, and washed away topsoil, leading to long-term ecological consequences. Wildlife has been displaced, with many species struggling to find food and shelter in the aftermath. These environmental disruptions echo the reordering of the natural world that followed the biblical flood, where the earth was left barren and in need of renewal. The current situation calls for a renewed commitment to environmental stewardship and conservation, recognizing the interconnectedness of human and ecological health. In the midst of this crisis, there is also a spiritual and philosophical dimension to consider, much like the lessons imparted by the story of Noah. The biblical flood was not only a means of divine punishment, but also a promise of redemption and a new beginning, symbolized by the Rainbow Covenant. Similarly, the California floods can be seen as a wake-up call, urging humanity to reflect on its actions and the moral and ethical implications of its relationship with the Earth. This disaster challenges individuals and societies to reconsider their values, prioritize sustainability, and adopt more responsible lifestyles. It calls for collective introspection and a commitment to making amends with the environment, fostering a sense of humility and respect for the natural world. Furthermore, the floods have sparked important discussions about climate change and the urgent need for action. Scientists, policymakers, and activists are increasingly vocal about the necessity of addressing the root causes of such extreme weather events. There is a growing recognition that mitigating climate change requires comprehensive and sustained efforts, including reducing greenhouse gas emissions, transitioning to renewable energy sources, and protecting natural habitats. The biblical flood narrative, with its themes of destruction and renewal, serves as a powerful metaphor for the transformative change needed to avert future environmental disasters. The floods in California, reminiscent of the great storm that cleansed the world of sinfulness in the story of Noah's Ark, provide a multifaceted lens through which to understand the current crisis. This disaster underscores the consequences of environmental neglect and climate change, while also highlighting the resilience and solidarity of affected communities. It calls for a re-evaluation of human values and practices, urging a renewed commitment to environmental stewardship and sustainability. Much like the covenant that followed the biblical flood, this catastrophe offers an opportunity for redemption and a new beginning, challenging humanity to build a more just, equitable, and harmonious relationship with the earth. Through collective action, compassion, and a deeper understanding of our interconnectedness with nature, we can hope to emerge from this crisis stronger and more resilient, paving the way for a brighter and more sustainable future. Embrace faith, obedience, and resilience in the face of biblical floods and work together to build a more just and sustainable world. Faith and obedience are important in times of adversity, as the biblical flood of 2024 serves as a reminder of God's guidance and protection. Noah's faith in God during the Great Flood serves as an example for followers of Christ to embody faith and obedience, highlighting God's grace and mercy in providing salvation and hope in dark times. The power of the Most High is evident in the face of cataclysmic events, but there is still reason for hope in the resilience and determination of the human spirit. We should strive to build a world grounded in faith, compassion, and reverence for the natural world, working in harmony with each other. The floods of 2024 have been a profound testament to the enduring importance of these principles. As waters rose, so did the need for unwavering faith and steadfast obedience to divine guidance, echoing the lessons from Scripture.
In the face of overwhelming adversity, faith provides the strength to persevere and the hope to rebuild, while obedience to God's will ensures a path aligned with righteousness and resilience. The floods of 2024, like the one described in the Bible, have been a stark reminder of human vulnerability and the limits of our control over nature. In such times of crisis, faith becomes an anchor, grounding individuals and communities amidst the chaos. The stories of those affected are replete with acts of courage and unwavering belief. Families huddled together in makeshift shelters, praying for safety and deliverance, draw parallels to Noah and his family, who trusted in God's promise despite the overwhelming destruction surrounding them. This collective faith not only provides emotional solace, but also fosters a sense of community and mutual support as people come together to help one another, driven by a shared belief in a higher power and a better future. Obedience to God's guidance is equally crucial in these trying times. The biblical narrative of Noah's Ark underscores the importance of heeding divine instructions. Noah's obedience in building the Ark, despite the skepticism and mockery he faced, ultimately ensured the survival of his family and the continuation of life on Earth. Similarly, the flood of 2024 has highlighted the need to listen to and act upon wise counsel and directives. Emergency services, government officials, and community leaders have played critical roles in coordinating evacuation efforts and providing vital resources. Their ability to command trust and prompt swift action reflects the importance of following guidance for the collective good. This obedience is not just to earthly authorities, but is often seen as an extension of divine will guiding people through the crisis. The spiritual dimension of the flood cannot be overlooked. For many, the disaster has prompted deep introspection and a re-evaluation of their relationship with God and nature. Churches, mosques, synagogues, and other places of worship have become sanctuaries of hope and centers for relief efforts. Religious leaders have provided not only practical support, but also spiritual guidance, helping people find meaning and purpose amidst the suffering. This spiritual leadership mirrors Noah's role as a patriarch who led his family with unwavering faith. By turning to prayer, scripture, and communal worship, individuals find strength and direction, reaffirming their faith and obedience to God's plan. The flood has also served as a catalyst for renewed commitments to environmental stewardship and sustainable living. In many faith traditions, there is a profound respect for creation, and the biblical flood story is often interpreted as a call to honor and protect the earth. The devastation of 2024 has underscored the consequences of environmental neglect and the urgent need for responsible stewardship. Faith communities have been at the forefront of advocating for sustainable practices, drawing on scriptural teachings that emphasize the sanctity of the earth and humanity's role as caretakers. This perspective fosters a sense of duty and obedience to divine mandates to preserve the natural world for future generations. The rebuilding efforts post-flood have been marked by a spirit of cooperation and resilience that is deeply rooted in faith. Volunteers and aid workers, often motivated by religious convictions, have been instrumental in providing relief and rebuilding communities. Their efforts are guided by a sense of service and obedience to the call to love and support one's neighbor. This communal effort mirrors the cooperative spirit that Noah and his family needed to survive the flood and start anew. The shared goal of restoring homes, infrastructure, and lives has united people across different backgrounds and beliefs, reinforcing the power of faith and obedience to overcome adversity. Moreover, the flood has illuminated the importance of faith-based initiatives and organizations in disaster response. Many religious organizations possess extensive networks and resources that have been mobilized to provide aid swiftly and efficiently. These groups often operate with a level of trust and community integration that allows them to reach the most vulnerable populations effectively. Their presence and action in times of crisis embody the principles of faith and obedience, demonstrating a tangible commitment 
to God's call to serve and protect those in need. The narrative of the flood also resonates with the theme of renewal and divine promise. Just as the rainbow in the story of Noah symbolized God's covenant to never again destroy the earth with a flood, the aftermath of the 2024 floods carries a promise of renewal and hope. Survivors are rebuilding not just their physical surroundings, but also their lives, imbued with a renewed sense of purpose and faith. This rebuilding process is a testament to human resilience and the belief that, despite the destruction, there is a divine plan and protection at work. The collective effort to restore and improve communities is seen as part of fulfilling God's promise and aligning with His will. Hence, the biblical flood of 2024 has underscored the profound importance of faith and obedience in times of adversity. The catastrophic events have drawn people closer to their spiritual beliefs, reinforcing the need for unwavering trust in God's guidance and adherence to divine principles. As communities navigate the immense challenges of recovery, the virtues of faith and obedience provide the foundation for resilience, cooperation, and renewal. By turning to their faith, Individuals and communities find the strength to persevere, the wisdom to rebuild sustainably, and the hope to envision a future aligned with divine promise and protection. This disaster, like the biblical flood, serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring relevance of faith and obedience in overcoming the trials of life and emerging stronger and more united. Humanity's persistent sinfulness manifesting in rampant environmental degradation and the increasing frequency of natural disasters, starkly illustrates the dire consequences of neglecting our responsibility to care for the earth. However, the Bible offers hope and calls for stewardship of the earth to heal the brokenness and find restoration. The earth was originally designed to exist in perfect harmony, but the fall of humanity disrupted this balance, leading to discord in the relationship between humans and the natural world. Humanity's sin and disobedience have led to environmental degradation, and the biblical flood serves as a warning of the consequences of human actions on the natural world. Ecological crises, climate change, rising sea levels, deforestation and species extinction are causing natural disasters but the Bible offers hope in the face of human sin and greed. Christians are called to be stewards of the earth, advocating for sustainable policies and practices and working to heal the brokenness in the world. The fate of the earth is linked to the fate of humanity, and only by turning back to God can lasting healing and restoration be found. By embracing faith, obedience, and stewardship, and trusting in God's providence, Humanity can weather any storm and build a more just and sustainable world. The unchecked exploitation of natural resources, pollution, deforestation, and climate change are modern echoes of the biblical narrative of human transgression and its repercussions. However, the Bible not only highlights these consequences, but also offers a profound message of hope and a call to stewardship that can guide humanity toward healing and restoration. This dual narrative of warning and redemption is essential in addressing the current environmental crisis. From the earliest chapters of Genesis, the Bible establishes humanity's role as stewards of creation. In Genesis 2.15, Adam is placed in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it, signifying a divine mandate to cultivate and protect the natural world. This stewardship is a sacred trust reflecting the inherent value of creation and humanity's responsibility to maintain its balance and beauty. However, just as Adam and Eve's disobedience led to their expulsion from Eden and subsequent suffering, our collective disregard for environmental stewardship has led to a world plagued by ecological crisis. The degradation of the environment is a tangible manifestation of humanity's broader moral failings, a reflection of greed, negligence, and a lack of foresight. The consequences of these actions are increasingly visible. Climate change, 
driven by greenhouse gas emissions from industrial activities, has led to rising global temperatures, melting ice caps, and erratic weather patterns. Natural disasters such as hurricanes, wildfires, floods, and droughts are becoming more frequent and severe, devastating communities and ecosystems alike. These events can be seen as both natural consequences of our actions and as wake-up calls reminiscent of biblical warnings. Yet amid these challenges, the Bible offers a message of hope and redemption. The prophetic books, particularly Isaiah, speak of a future where creation is restored and humanity lives in harmony with the natural world. Isaiah 11, 6 to 9 envisions a peaceful kingdom where predator and prey coexist peacefully, symbolizing a restored order of creation. This vision aligns with the promise of a new heaven and a new earth in Revelation 21, 1 to 4, where suffering and destruction are no more. These eschatological hopes encourage believers to work towards a foretaste of this renewed creation in the present, promoting practices that heal and sustain the environment. The concept of creation care has gained traction within contemporary Christianity, urging believers to consider the environmental impact of their actions and engage in sustainable practices. Practical applications of stewardship can be seen in various movements within Christianity that emphasize ecological responsibility, such as reducing carbon footprints, supporting renewable energy, conserving water, and protecting biodiversity. Many churches and faith-based organizations are actively involved in environmental advocacy, education, and conservation projects, reflecting a commitment to stewarding God's creation faithfully. The biblical principle of Sabbath rest also offers a valuable framework for environmental stewardship. Just as the Sabbath provides rest and renewal for humans, it extends to the land as well. The concept of a sabbatical year, outlined in Leviticus 25, 1-7, calls for the land to lie fallow every seventh year, allowing it to recover and restore its fertility. This ancient practice underscores the importance of sustainable agriculture and the need to balance productivity with ecological health in modern contexts. Moreover, the notion of repentance and transformation is central to the biblical response to sin and its consequences. Just as individuals are called to repent and turn back to God, humanity as a whole must recognize its environmental transgressions and seek to amend them. This involves both personal lifestyle changes to reduce environmental impact and collective action through policies that promote sustainability and address climate change. The biblical call to justice also plays a crucial role, as environmental degradation often disproportionately affects the poor and vulnerable. Advocating for environmental justice means addressing these inequalities and ensuring that all people have access to clean air, water, and a healthy environment. Faith communities have a unique and powerful role to play in this transformative process. By integrating environmental stewardship into their teachings, worship, and community activities, they can foster a culture of care and responsibility. Religious leaders can use their platforms to educate and inspire action, drawing on scriptural teachings that highlight the intrinsic value of creation and the moral imperative to protect it. This spiritual dimension can motivate individuals and communities to engage in long-term efforts to heal the earth, driven by a sense of divine calling and purpose. The Bible's narrative arc from creation to fall to redemption offers a profound framework for understanding and addressing the environmental crisis. It reminds us that while human sin has led to the degradation of the natural world, there is always hope for restoration through faith and action. The call to stewardship is not just about preventing further harm, but also about actively participating in God's redemptive work, bringing healing to a broken world. This journey requires faith, action, and a deep sense of responsibility, but it promises a future where humanity and the earth can thrive together in mutual flourishing. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, seeking your mercy and grace for the healing and restoration of our precious earth. 
We acknowledge the wounds inflicted upon the planet through human greed, neglect, and exploitation. We have strayed from our stewardship responsibilities, causing harm to the environment and jeopardizing the well-being of future generations. Lord, we lift up our prayers for the earth, asking for your healing touch to mend the brokenness we have caused. May your divine light shine upon every corner of the world, bringing renewal and regeneration to ecosystems ravaged by pollution, deforestation, and climate change. Grant wisdom to world leaders, scientists, and policymakers as they seek solutions to environmental challenges. Guide them to make decisions that prioritize the protection and preservation of your creation. In the midst of uncertainty and despair, we cling to our faith, knowing that you are the ultimate source of hope and redemption. Help us to trust in your providence and sovereignty, believing that you can turn even the darkest situations into opportunities for growth and renewal. Strengthen our resolve to be faithful stewards of the earth, cultivating a deep reverence for all living beings and ecosystems. Fill our hearts with love, Lord, that we may extend compassion and care to every creature and plant. Teach us to live in harmony with nature, recognizing that our well-being is intricately connected to the health of the environment. Inspire us to adopt sustainable practices in our daily lives, reducing our ecological footprint and fostering a culture of environmental stewardship. As we lift our voices in prayer for the healing and restoration of the earth, may we also embody the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Let our actions reflect our trust in your promises, our optimism for a brighter future, and our commitment to loving our neighbors and the planet you have entrusted to our care. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who came to reconcile all things to yourself. Amen.